Hello, YouTubers. I hope you're well today. I just wanted to make a video covering um, the undeniable reasons why a woman cannot sustain a healthy pregnancy past 12 months and also cover reasons for a slow growing baby other than a hormone imbalance. I do have a video here. Um, it's showing you the weeks and then the uterus growth according, uh, corresponding to the weeks. You can see here it shows that the uterus growing pushes the intestines out of the way, keeping the mother safe and healthy and ultimately keeping baby safe and healthy. I'm going to read some literature from the Cryptic Pregnancy Support Group and the Gilmore Foundation. Characteristics of a cryptic pregnancy are negative urine and blood pregnancy test, continued periods, typical pregnancy symptoms, and at times negative ultrasounds. Even with these issues, the woman continues to experience pregnancy symptoms, including the sensation of fetal movement. Cryptic pregnancies are typically, typically carried between two and five years due to slow growth of the fetus caused by low HCG due to a hormone imbalance. This hormonal imbalance seems to keep the body from completely knowing it's pregnant. So the mother continues to have her period as well as ovulate. Because she will continue to bleed throughout the entire pregnancy, the HCG is never allowed to build up and secrete into the urine or blood because some of it is shed every time she bleeds. I do have a video that I made um, explaining hormonal imbalance in cryptic pregnancy together and I will link that in the description of this video. I do apologize if you hear my sons in the background. They are awake and very active and healthy, so they will be heard in the background. I do apologize if it muffles um, any part of my speech, but I will try to make sure that you can hear me. Just a little fact for you. Your body's job and main concern over everything in this world is to stay as healthy as possible with the resources you provide it on a daily basis. The resources available for health are food, water, light, antioxidants, oxygen, thoughts, and intentions. When provided these things, the body is able to flourish, fighting and preventing future illness, diseases, and or complications. You can reverse and prevent aging of every system and organ on the body. Eating, drinking, and thinking healthy is an amazing thing, and I personally advise a whole food plant-based diet with limited to no oil. Sustaining a pregnancy past a year would be a huge burden on your body, not to mention having a monthly cycle where the lining of the uterus is shed and then has to rebuild every month. This is said to happen every month for years during a cryptic pregnancy. Your body would not be able to keep up, and here is why. Pregnancy is a miraculous process. It is a time when a woman should decide to make an effort to tune into her body, her mind, her soul, and the baby with the support of her surroundings. A woman's knowledge of pregnancy and giving birth is instinctual and should be very empowering. Human babies are born helpless and needy, a fact that anthropologists have long explained by pointing to the size of the female pelvis. If babies were born with bigger brains, the theory goes, they get stuck in the birth canal. Instead, they stop gestating before they grow too large, resulting in completely dependent newborns. But, not, but the story may not be so simple. New research finds a study published today, well, this was in the past, I put the date here, August 27th, 2012, 
that argues that it's not the size of the mom's pelvis that determines when baby is born, but her metabolism. Human mothers also invest a lot of energy in their babies in the womb. So why are babies born after nine months of gestation and not some other point? Dunsworth and her colleagues found that metabolism may hold the answer. By six months of pregnancy, the woman expends twice their usual energy, keeping basic metabolic processes going, a burden that only gets greater as the fetus gets larger. The typical maximum metabolic rate humans can sustain is between two times and two and a half times average, with some exceptions such as professional cyclists. That means the female body may simply not be able to cycle through enough energy to keep a pregnancy going more than nine months. During pregnancy, your body goes through major changes. One of those changes is an increase in your metabolic rate. The increase doubles with twins and the burden is ever even greater on the pregnant mother. During pregnancy, you and your growing baby or babies are relying on the nutrients that you consume for health and energy. Your metabolism must increase to compensate for this extra burden. Making changes to your diet can assist your body with this increase. Metabolism is faster during pregnancy. Your body, the fetus, placenta, and uterus are all vying for energy that you are consuming. The combination leads to an increase in the total calories you and your fetus all as a whole burn. As a female, our bodies were built to be able to sustain such a burden, but only for so long. Here's more. Identifying an increase in your body's metabolism is easy. Conditions such as insulin, hormone, as well as an increase in your body's temperature indicate that you are using more energy. Dizziness can also mean that your metabolism has increased. It is not in your body's best interest to carry a pregnancy past 12 months. It is not in any part of your biology as a woman to ultimately starve the mother of nutrients for years to carry a cryptic baby to term. Women who experience hyperemesis gravidarium barely make it through the regular nine month pregnancy and some women who are extremely malnourished and dehydrated are induced early. Then they have a long road back to recovery. A pregnancy lasting longer than 12 months would put unnecessary strain on the woman's body and deplete all her resources and vital nutrients, which could have a detrimental effect on her health and wellness in the long term. The mother could become feeble and unable to take care of the baby when he or she decided to come. You, and the mother wouldn't be able to breastfeed due to a lack of nutrition and resources. The strain on a mother's hips, back, pelvis, knees, ankles, and feet from carrying a baby, baby for years would be debilitating. Carrying a baby for longer than 12 months can possibly cause abnormal damage to the bladder, colon, pelvic floor, perineal body, and abdominal muscles. It could possibly cause the mother to go blind, losing her hearing, or even create things like diabetes or high blood pressure from malnutrition. A woman carrying a baby past a year is at greater risk for developing complications such as preeclampsia, eclampsia, and placental damage such as placenta previa, placental perfusion, and placental abruption. Both mother and baby are, are at a higher risk for developing or contracting an infection. Baby is at a much higher risk of inhaling meconium during the years it is in the womb. The baby could develop a neurological disorder or suffer from physical limitations because of malnutrition. If the mom is malnourished, baby is most definitely feeling and paying for that lack. The mother is at high risk for developing a blood clot when carrying a baby longer than the typical 42 weeks. Baby is at high risk for developing complications involving the umbilical cord. Mother is at risk for developing liver toxicity, liver disease, an aneurysm, heart complications, brain 
toxicity, toxicity, bladder infections if she carries a baby for months past her due date, let alone years. These are all major complications and possibly put mo both mother and baby's lives at risk. Pregnancy is highly taxing on the body, and it is your body's instinct and natural process to protect its integrity. Your body will not sacrifice itself to keep a baby alive. It makes no sense when it comes to human survival. Your brain is hardwired to survive, and when it has to choose self or baby, it will always choose self. Furthermore, one of the most important reasons your body will not carry a baby past the very rare 12-month gestation is because it puts the woman's future fertility at risk. The risk of abnormal damage to the uterus muscles and ligaments is very high. The fallopian tubes, ovaries, and cervix and vaginal canal are all at very high risk during an extended gestational pregnancy past 12 months. The body is not, hot, hot, not wired to sacrifice its future fertility for an abnormal zygote. It is wired to protect the integrity of every system in the body because they are all important. The risk of complications occurring with an extended gestational pregnancy apply to the lip, lymph system, endocrine system, and the thyroid. Complication, complications arising in these systems are lower but are still very real indeed. All of the complications I have listed should be monitored closely by a doctor or OB to ensure the safety and proper development of both mom and baby when the possibility of such complications are high. In, ex in an extended gestational pregnancy with a slow growing baby, the risk of complications are very high. I wanted to quickly cover breastfeeding in an extended gestational pregnancy, a pregnancy lasting only lasts nine months because the woman still needs enough resources to breastfeed their baby once they give birth. And the only way your body can make sure that that happens is to deliver the baby when it has reached its metabolic max. And then baby and mom decide when baby is born. It is a gentle game of tug and war. Once baby comes to the, once, baby comes, the body starts to stockpile nutrients again as much as it can so that it can provide nourishing breast milk to baby. But majority of what is consumed by the mother is given directly to baby while the mother holds on to the weight she hopefully gained from pregnancy to help sustain her. These are just some of my thoughts. A pregnancy only lasts nine months because the mother still has months ahead of her of getting up every two hours to breastfeed, sometimes years, before the baby sleeps through the night. A five-year pregnancy followed by two years of breastfeeding and waking up throughout the night would be exhausting and age you tremendously. The scientific research to back up the negative effects of sleep deprivation is immense. Plus, the resources it takes to breastfeed, the mother... Sorry. The mother would never be able to recover in time to take care of the baby. The body is energy efficient and wise, yes. It knows exactly what it is doing and makes its decisions based upon a written code. A code that is malleable and corrective. Our DNA corrects itself. When given the necessary nutrients, water, and thoughts, it fixes, it fixes the mistakes when appropriate and meaningful thought is put into your actions and intentions. A pregnancy is a beautiful process perfected by the female body. To, to suggest that you can conceive with a hormone imbalance, have a slow-growing baby, and have a uterus so retroverted or tilted that it grows behind the intestines and organs for the entire remainder of the pregnancy and doesn't correct itself even halfway, pushing baby forward and making... The arms, legs, back, butt, and head very noticeable with the movement you see is frivolous. The baby has to get bigger to sustain life outside the womb. So the bigger the baby gets, the bigger you get. 
and the more obvious the lack of these things are when you notice movement, quote unquote, on the outside. Pregnancy is a complex process, but the woman's body is built to have babies and knows exactly what it is doing based upon the viability of the embryo itself. Problems in the reproductive area are created in today's society through a lack of education in nutrition, thoughts, and holistic medicine. Uh, let's briefly discuss stallment, or when a baby gets periods of time without any growth at all. Um, think about this critically, realistically. A half-grown baby in the middle of creating his or her, his or her eyeball all of a sudden goes into hibernation in the middle of making that very delicate eyeball. The cells suddenly stop growing and the baby patiently waits for more quote unquote hormone to finish creating that perfect little eyeball. This, this is pure fabrication. There is no substance or system in your body that manages this. A baby having the ability to go into a stealth mode to save its life is pure fantasy. And we have to point out that the woman's body will not waste resources and risk future fertility to save a baby that could suffer huge complications due to mother's lack. It is not in the mother's or baby's biology to be able to perform such a daunting and impossible task as to keep the baby alive for months before it can start growing, quote unquote, again. And then I will leak the, um, the site that I um, quoted talking about um, metabolic rate. Let's quickly cover possible causes of a slow growing baby. Slow fetal growth or intrauterine growth restriction is a term that denotes poor health of a baby while in the womb. In fact, 60% of the total neonatal deaths worldwide may be due to low birth weight and a direct outcome of slow growth of fetus. There are several possible causes of a slow growing fetus, including the following. The unborn baby is not able to get adequate, adequate oxygen and nutrient, nutrition from the placenta. It may be due to several reasons like multiple pregnancies, preeclampsia, or placental problems. Sorry. It can also be due to staying at a high al altitude. It can, you can have a slow-growing baby due to congenital or chromosomal abnormalities. During pregnancy, if the mother suffers from infections... Or if the mother has a poor lifestyle habits like nutritional deficiency, drug abuse, smoke habit, or alcohol addiction. Also, if they have any kind of um, illnesses like kidney dysfunction, high blood pressure, clotting disorders, or heart disease. All of these can cause a slow growing baby. Abnormalities in the umbilical cord or low levels of amniotic fluid, fluid could also increase the risk of slow fetal growth. So all of these things should be, if you have a slow growing baby, you need to be monitored by a doctor. It is very important because it is very crucial to your baby's health. These are all very huge risks. There are steps to diagnose slow fetal growth, such as ultrasounds, um, you, they can check the measurement of the uterine fundal height. So even if you have a slow growing baby, they should still be able to find it on an ultrasound. The doctor may advise you to go other go under undergo other tests such as infection screening, heart rate tracking, and amniocentesis to confirm that you in fact have intro or intra uterine growth restriction and identifies its cause because you need to be treated for this. This is something that's of great concern. So I hope this helps someone. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Don't forget to like and su subscribe if you want updates of when I post new videos. I have lots to cover, so don't go anywhere. Thank you. Wishing you all the best. Bye.